I think that the connection between art and politics is not a very necessarily a, a given connection. I mean, I teach I teach about art and politics. It's a way for me to um, make art towards something that feels like uh, that feels urgent. So you know, taking whatever skills I have to 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 put towards this kind of work of advocacy and a activism that I've that I've been interested in. But at the same time, I don't think that art has to be very political. I don't think it, I, it you know, I think, I, I, yeah, I don't think it necessarily has to be, but for me, that's just how it, it has always worked out. Questions of like race and punk gives me deadlines to actually complete these things. I kinda... You know, one of the things that I love about punk is not just uh, the politics that I discovered there and the kind of radical education I got through punk, but just also the aesthetic. I try to let my students know that they don't need to be experts uh, in order to make stuff. Like that's been really, that's, that's again something I learned from punk, which is that you know you don't have to do it perfect, uh, you just have to do it. And, and, and if you f*** up, then you just do it again. My name is Mimi Tingwen, and I am a, uh, 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 an old punk who makes stuff. When I was growing up, I had two ideas about what I was going to do uh, when I became an adult. Um, one was that I was going to write fantasy fiction, um, and the other was that I was going to illustrate fantasy fiction. So um, I've been drawing for a very long time. I remember at one point in fifth grade, I was like charging people money for drawings from a like menu of fantastical creatures. I would be like, you could have a mermaid or a unicorn, and then it was like there were like there's like money involved. You know, I'm trying to remember if I took art classes. I think I took like one art class in high school. Um, um, you know, I mean, when you're a kid, they're always throwing you into an art class, and and but I don't necessarily feel like there was any particular experience in any of those classes that impacted me. Impacted me. I think it really was just, you know, I, I really was very focused on 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 fantasy illustration. Up until I discovered punk, uh, when I was. 15 or 16, I thought I was going to go in, into either uh, writing fiction until I realized that I was very terrible at writing dialogue. I discovered punk around 15 or 16 um, and it politicized me um, and, and took me in this other direction into, into the one, you know, to, to, so that, you know, it totally made me who I am today, which is also professor of gender and women's studies and ethnic studies. Clearly, I'm still, I, I, you know, also still was inspired to continue to just make stuff, right? Like, uh, um, uh, punk was very instrumental in me feeling like, oh, I can just, you know, I, I don't need to go to school to, to draw or to, I can't make music, but other people can make music without having to go to school for it. Um, uh, and I can use my art to do, um, to, to mobilize around the things I care about. A zine is a self-published small magazine type thing like this. And any kinds of things can be in it, right? So I tend to write very long-winded things that are about art and politics. Definitely a part of Making the zine for me is also like the the the, the layout. Like I love doing layout. I, I don't like computer layouts. When I was first making zines, um, I knew a little bit of graphic design on the computer, but I just enjoyed the the, the process of cutting things out and using glue. I have to very consciously change the way that I write. My zines have always had a, been slightly academic because uh, I because you know I. I I, most of my writing is very political. My zines that I made when I was an undergraduate are totally informed by whatever classes I was taking in women's studies at the time. It's a challenge to me to, to remember how to write um, differently uh, than I do for my academic work.
I still really love the Race Riot zines that I made. Like, I feel like they're probably the best thing I've ever done and will ever be and will, will always be the most favorite thing that I've ever done. I did the first evolution of a race riot when I was like 22 or something, and it created a conversation about people of color in punk that wasn't there previously. Um, and I still run into uh, people who, uh, you know, read a copy of a copy of a copy that was handed down from somebody and how it really still like, spoke to their sense of what it is to be like, a person of color in general, not just even in a punk scene or a, a, a subculturally adjacent scene. Um, so that's been really important to me. So I continue to think that those are some of the best things I've ever done. And I loved that they were collaborative projects, right? I loved that it was about, um, it really was about making a space for a conversation to unfold. Some of the other things that I've done that I've been really excited about are uh, collaborating with artists. The poster behind me was made by an LA-based uh, queer artist named Sarah Faith. We collaborated on the, um, the like what it would look like and, and what the wording would be for this poster that she made as a fundraiser for the Sylvia Rivera Law Project in uh, New York City, which is a, a nonprofit organization that uh, offers legal resources and services to low-income and marginalized trans persons. Um, so that's been uh, really important to me. And then the other project that I've been involved in most recently that I think has been uh, a lot of fun <laughs> are my Keanu Cares prints. <laughs> I was drawing these images of the American Buddhist nun Pema Chodron, author of many self-help books. Uh, like When Things Fall Apart, which I first read when I was going through tenure, so it was really helpful. Thanks, Pema. I had this dream where Pema Chodron and Keanu Reeves were somehow interacting, and I woke up and I was like, oh my god, this makes total sense because, you know, like everyone talks about Keanu Reeves having a very kind of like zen approach to life, and if you read his interviews, he does say things like, I stay grounded because my feet touch the ground or something. And I'm just like, oh my God, that's so smart. I mean, that's a totally a Buddhist thing, right? Like be present where you are by feeling this, like the weight of your body in, uh, on the, uh, in, in the world. So, um, so it got into my head that I should do a series of um, like taking stills from Keanu Reeves movies and inserting Pema Chodron as the other character, which he he's interacting with. So like, instead of Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves jumping out of a plane, it's Pema Chodron and Keanu Reeves jumping out of a plane, or Dracula and his character in that movie. Um, uh, and instead it's Pema Chodron and his character in that movie, I think Jonathan Harker. Um, so I had been doing this, the, these drawings and posting them on my Facebook, and then my uh, friend Mimi Cook who um, uh, was working on this amazing special issue of a journal called Asian American Literary Review. And it was a special issue that was on um, uh, Asian Americans and mental health, and it was called Open an Emergency. Asked me to contribute some of those drawings to the um, project um, and as a fundraiser for the project. So I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta make this more manageable. So then it turned into Keanu Kara series, which is just Keanu by himself, but with like self-help, like self-care slogans. And so uh, they were first published in, in that special issue. Um, but then uh, with the election um, last fall, a lot of my friends and, and myself included were super panicked about what it would mean for um, all kinds of um, um, vulnerable populations and, uh, and and we were just all freaking out and trying to think about what we could do to um, uh, do what harm reduction we could um, in the in the coming months and, and years. My friend and colleague uh, Professor Toby Beecham um, started a fundraiser for um, trans persons who needed their uh, gender and birth marker cha changes done in their legal paperwork and wanted to get it done before January 20th because nobody knew like what was gonna happen after that. Like, you know. So I decided to make prints of the Keanu Cares series that I had finished.
Most recently, I've been, I taught myself how to do some graphic design on the computer and I've been mostly doing things like designing the buttons for GWS, <laughs> uh, which I think are really good buttons, but I've been doing that to make a lot of um, door signs and uh, posters uh, uh, in response to uh, the political moment and, and, and making them available um, to people to download and print out. I still really want to do the Pema Chodron Keanu Reeves project as like an adult coloring book, <laughs> but I have to do that before the trend is over. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I feel like it's I feel like it's already on the tail end of the trend. I don't know. I mean, I see it in airports all the time, so maybe it's not. For me, I, it's not so much like the finishing of it, but like the process of having a, a project that um, that gives me a, set, a, a sort of parameters around like what I'm going to do. Um, that is an important part. So even if the adult curling book never happens, I, I'll still be drawing Keanu and Pema in the Matrix. Being an academic who also makes stuff is, has been really important to me in terms of just keeping me connected to um, uh, using my hands to make things. Um, and that's been really important to me. Being in a different uh, sort of headspace and being in my body a different way. Um, um, uh, so that's been very, very important to me. Also, I'd like to think that I have more skills than just like writing stuff. I love writing, but also there's there's something weirdly not that there, at times it's not as satisfying as I would like it to be. Like I want to be able to touch my words sometimes, right? Um, and to, and to uh, have a different kind of relationship to them. Um, so being able to make stuff um, is, 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 has been really, uh, you know, it, it definitely helps me feel more sane about, about being in the academy. Thinking about making stuff with your hands and 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 making art, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be for anything. It doesn't have to um, do anything. It, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it can it can just be a part of like how you move through the world. To get involved and support the Urbana Public Arts Program, please contact the Public Arts Coordinator Rachel Storm at rlstorm at urbanaillinois.us or 217-328-8265.